Comedy Central. Mike Powell leaps. Dick Vitale speaks. Mark Collins deeps. And JoJo Starbuck competes. All on this edition of... Sports Monster, featuring the future Hall of Famer and living legend, superstar Joe Polster. The much-traveled veteran of 22 big league teams in six years, John Heyman. And the former weatherman with the perpetually sunny disposition, Steve Thomas. Polster, Heyman, Thomas. Sports Monster. Welcome to Sports Monster. I am future Hall of Famer Joe Bolster. They are the man they call Mr. Sunshine, Steve Thomas, and the much-traveled catcher, John Heyman. John? Well, everyone knows professional athletes and coaches supplement their income with endorsements and personal appearances. But Chicago Bulls head coach Phil Jackson has taken a unique approach. Jackson, a lifelong admirer of legendary ventriloquist Edgar Bergen, will be touring the country with his nutty buddies, Knucklehead Jordan and Naughty Pippin. It promises to be Puppet Larius. Steve? Thank you, John. Responding to pressure from Native Americans, the Cleveland Indians have decided to change their nickname from Indians to something more dignified, along the lines of Oscar-winning movie Dances with Wolves. Names being discussed are Finishes and Cellar, Always Trades Best Players in Prime, and Why Are We Still Paying Keith Hernandez? In a related story, the University of Notre Dame has decided to change its name from fighting Irish to the more appropriate, drunken Irish. And speaking of football, Steve, I understand that you and uh, my colleague here, John Heyman, uh, went out to Giant Stadium the other day. Right you are, Joe, and we found out a little bit about the hidden game of pro football. Man, I hope this doesn't take long. I got a racquetball game in an hour. Oh, Johnny, this is going to be fun. We're going to meet a real-life NFL star. Yeah, who are we talking to, anyhow? Mark Collins, defensive back for the Giants. Defense? How boring is that? Couldn't we get an offensive player? John, I'm telling you, this guy shut down Jerry Rice in the NFC Championship game last year. Defensive backs are very skilled ball players. Give me a break. Any maroon can play defensive back. Why do you think they play zone all the time? I'm telling you, I bet you one-on-one, -on -one, I could take Collins. Mark Collins. Steve what? Thomas, Steve, Sports Monster. Steve, Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming down. Who's your friend there? This is John Heyman. Ah, uh, yeah, I was, John, I was, I was just John. leaving. I don't know what you're saying. John, let's take it to the field. Come on out. Oh, no, man, I got a, an no. old war injury John, I got up in come Canada. On. Well, I'll fix it for you. Uh, I really can't. Take it out. Come here. Okay. But I... Uh, Set. Hey. Hey, Johnny, you okay? Man, that was brutal. What do you mean? He hardly laid a hand on you. Yeah? Take a look at the replay. I'll tell you, John, it's amazing the things you can see when they slow the action down. And I'll tell you something, we didn't even see the handgun. Hmm. When Sports Monster returns, Dick Vitale. Hi, everybody, I'm Dick Vitale. I mean, you talk about fun, you talk about sports action, you better stay tuned and you better be watching because right after this, we're going to have more of the Sports Monster. Hi, my friends, it's Tony Cheese, the one, the only, the all-time greatest sports handicapper in the history of history. Hey, it ain't bragging if you can do it, and that's why they call me the Wizard of Odds. And if you rush to your phone right now and call the Wizard Wire at 1-900-555-5555, you too will give thanks that a man such as myself walks the earth.
Why? Because this week only on a Wizard Wire, it's my very special Welcome to America Thanksgiving Holiday Super Spectacular Bonanza. Yes, sir, for the bargain basement price of only $11.95 a minute, you'll get all my can't miss super bets in the world of sports. And just so you know, I'm the goods. Remember, it was Tony Cheese's great great grandfather who picked the Pilgrims to upset the Indians in that tremendous battle of yesteryear, even though the Pilgrims were playing on the road. Hey, little Tony. You want turkey or pizza? Huh? Pizza? You want the dark cheese or white cheese? White cheese? You're a good kid. What am I, Pocahontas here? Hey, so listen, if you want to go Christmas shop with cards and cons of Chris Cole cash, call the Wizard Wire at 1-900-ALL-FIVES because I own Major League Baseball, Monday Night Football, the NBA, the NHL, and all international sports, including, but not limited to, Portuguese dog fishing, Venezuelan wheel walking, the Puerto Rican Good Humor Man Highlight Championships, Hungarian baby tossing, Czechoslovakian bear tickling, South Tasmanian leopard diving, Brazilian snake packing, the Mideast Regional Romanian Twister Finals, and of course, Polish harness racing. So give me a buzz, place a few bets, and slice off a nice chunk of change. That's the wizard wire. one 900 all fives. Call now, because I'm hot, I'm red hot, and I'm sizzling. Welcome back to Sports Monster, along with John Heyman, I'm Steve Thomas. On a recent trip to Los Angeles to play the Clippers, the NBA's number one draft choice, Larry Johnson of the Charlotte Hornets, found time to spend some of his signing bonus in Beverly Hills. Accompanied by basketball fan and movie star Richard Gere, Johnson selected a number of outrageously priced outfits, including this ensemble from Giorgio's and ultra-chic Rodeo Drive. Oh, pretty woman. John? Well, Steve, here we are at the beginning of the NCAA basketball season, and Dick Vitale, the bombastic voice of college hoops, has written a book, Time Out Baby. And Dick is here in the studio to show our own Joe Bolster the ins and outs of being an announcer. Gentlemen? Boy, Dick Vitale, good to see you again. I'll tell you, Joe, great seeing you. I mean, I can't believe it. The last time we seen each other was several years ago. And I'll here tell you exactly Dick. when it was. 1985, NC2A, David knocks off Goliath. Oh, it was actually the Final Four. That was Roley Massimino the beating man. Georgetown. He pitched, a, pitched a perfect game. That's right. That's when he pitched to Don Larson, and he beat Patrick Ewing in Georgetown in Ohio. Hoyas. And now look at you, from the baseball, the little white ball, you want to be... A TV analyst in basketball. There I am. And you're coming to Dick Vitale's School of Broadcasting to try and help you out. But here's the first step. You ready? I'm ready. Step Tell one. me about it. Explain step it. Step one, okay. you must be able to analyze replays. Mm -hmm. So I want you right now right. to mentally take a picture okay. and imagine that we're looking at Michael Jordan. Right. And Michael is going to do his thing, and you're going to tell all the viewers out there what to do and what not to do when you're watching this replay. Okay. And then you're going to tell them why Michael is scoring. So right now, let me hear you evaluate Michael Jordan on his replay. All right, so I look at a replay. And you break and it down. Analyze it. Okay, okay here you ready to go? All righty. Let's try it, Joe, baby. Here's uh, Jordan on the replay. Michael shoots, and he scores. Oh, wait a minute, How's Joe. That? Wait a minute, wait a minute. you got to be more enthusiastic. you got to have passion. you got to have feeling. Sure. you got to have excitement. I mean, Michael Jordan, the game of basketball is full of energy and enthusiasm. Come on, Joe, get, get enthusiastic. A little more. All right, let's try it again. A little more. Right, a little bigger? A little bigger. All right. Okay. Here's Michael Jordan. He jumps, he shoots, and he scores. Oh, wait a minute. How's now. that? Now you got to get some identity a little bit better. Yeah. But now you have to have some personal identity with yourself right. with some catchphrases. You know, like Phil Rizzuto yeah. does with the Yankees. Holy, Holy cow. cow! And everybody remembers who you are. Yeah. Well, you got to do right. the same. So I'm going to give you one more shot. Okay. Let me hear you one more time. Look at Mr. Drew. All right. So personalize it. Personalize it. Great work. My own catchphrase. My own signature. Exactly. All Your right, own let me signature. See. Let me think. Okay. Here we go. Here's Michael Jordan. He jumps. He shoots. He scores. Two points. Swish. Oh, huh? wait a minute. I like the swish, and I tell you, I gave you a C last time. Now I've given you a B. I'm really upgrading your grade. But now I'm going to show you. I want you to listen and All watch. Right. I'm going to show you how I would do it if I was that. doing that one, okay? Good. A little teacher. A little teacher with his pupil. The mentor and the pupil. My ready to go? Calls okay. Jordan. Here we go. Okay. I'm looking at Michael Jordan. Here we go. Wow, I can't believe it, baby. He's a high riser. He's the elevator man. Look at him. He's up in the sky. He's a skywalker. He's a PT peer, baby. He's awesome with a capital A. I love him. Michael Jordan, inch for inch, pound for pound, the best player in the United States of America. That's how Ooh you do it. Wee. You like it? 
All Good right. Stuff, Let me just try it one more time, see if I've try got it. that. Come on. All right, so a lot of energy, a lot of uh, signature yeah. phrases. All right, here we go. Here's Michael Jordan, and he scores. He's a heck of a ball player. I like that. I'll tell you, Joe, you got a chance. All right. You got an outside chance to make it. And I think maybe with the looks you have, if I had your hairstyle, I'd make it in TV. Give this guy an A. Great A for effort. Well, I'll keep working on it, Dick, man. Thanks for coming by. Johnny, back to you. You know, Steve, if you look up quick study in the dictionary, I think you'll find a full-color picture of our own Joe Bolster. I couldn't agree with you more, Johnny. When Sports Monster returns, JoJo Starbuck ice dances like she's never danced before. The Sports Grill is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Welcome to the Sports Grill. Uh, I'm Joe Bolster. You know, most kids watch Superman on TV and they hear that line, uh, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. We've got a man here today who can come pretty close to that. Uh, in Tokyo last month, he set a new world record in the long jump, 29 feet, four and a half inches. I'm speaking, of course, of Mike Powell. Mike, good to see you here today. Good to see you too, Joe. Um, before we get started, I'd like to say it's been a, pl it's a pleasure for me to meet you after all these years of following your storied baseball career, and I consider it a pleasure to sit here next to you. Mike, I think we're going to get along pretty good. Okay. 29 feet, four and a half inches. Of course, two things with that jump. One, you beat a record that stood for 23 years, Bob Beeman, the storied long jump in 68 in Mexico City. Right. And you knocked off King Carl's 65 meet undefeated streak. Right. Yeah, Carl hadn't lost for 10 years, so mm -hmm. he had been uh, quite unbeatable for quite a long time. I think I just got kind of sick of him winning all the time, so I figured I'd do something about it. And it was, I was fortunate in order that I was able to uh, break the world record at the same time. Alrighty, now let's talk about the length of that leap, 29 feet, four and a half inches. Mm. For the guy sitting at home with a beer and a six pack, just right. about how far is that? Just give us an idea of how far you left. Well, if they're sitting there watching a the football game mm -hmm. and I were in, in the backfield during that game right. and they gave me the football and it was first down, I'd get another first down in one leap. Hike to Mike, 10 yards, first down, move right. the chains. Might only be one first down per game, could probably hurt myself doing it, but Correct. it'd be a first down, though. On the landing. Well, you know, Mike, I, again, I don't mean to belittle 30 feet. I mean, that's, that's quite a leap. Uh, but, I, you know, sometimes I feel like track and field athletes are guys that just couldn't play baseball, couldn't play basketball, couldn't play football, and they're out there, you know, doing a sport that's easy. All you got to do is run. Yeah. I think a Joe Bolster could go out there and pop a 30-footer, no problem. Well, I don't know. Baseball players are kind of out of shape. I don't know if they can, they can barely make it around the bases. I don't know if you could, you know, make it to their board, let alone jump 30 feet. Mr. Powell, those are fighting words. I'll tell you what, I will tell you what. We will go out in the hallway here, all right? It's about okay. 100 yards long, big, big ramp. I bet that I can jump 30 feet right now. Okay, I'll, I'll bet you that you can't do it. And I'll give you six jumps to do it. I only need one. You got one, man. All right, Mike, we're all set, man. 29, four and a half is a red. Black's 30 feet. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, you might want to watch out for that exit sign. Oh, I'll be nodding out with my head on the way down. Okay. Anything else? Uh, besides that, uh, you might want to take that watch off also. No, I'm going to leave it on. I want to see how long I'm up in the air. Okay. All right. Did you enjoy your three months as a record holder? I think I'll keep on enjoying it. Step back, man. Don't get hurt. All right. Oh, yeah! Hey, Joe. Yeah, man. You okay? I'm fine, man. I jumped 32 feet. You kidding me? I was in the air for like an hour. I feel great. You know, that's a great jump, but it doesn't count, though. What are you talking about? It was a foot foul. What? What? It was a foul. Get out of here. It wasn't a foul. Hey, let's take a look at the tape. Oh, man. That's yep. was like an eighth of an inch. Give me a break. right there. That doesn't make a difference. A foul is a foul. All right. Well, I'll take another jump, then. Uh, you said only one jump. Mike, give me a break, man. Come on. One more. One, one jump. One more. Yeah. Mike! Mike! Come back! Hey. Mike, where are you going, Mike? Come hey, on. hey, Joey! Snap out of it, pal. Wake up, man. Where's Mike Powell? What are you talking about? He called and canceled about 10 minutes ago. He's not showing up. Come on, we're in the middle of a show here. Steve? Officials at a Florida golf course covered local duffer Harold Womack's body with the sheet where he died on the 16th green. The body remained on the green and golfers played through. Golfer Robert Alexander said, It was a real shock to all of us, but there really was nothing we could do. Fortunately, winter rules applied, and Harold was considered ground under repair. Joe? 
Thanks, Steve. And speaking of fanatic golfers, here's golf expert Jerry Weber with a quick tip. Uh, Jerry, what do you got for us? Well, Joe, and by the way, good to see you again. I have a tape of Apollo astronaut Alan Shepard playing golf on the moon. Let's take a look. Okay, there's Alan with his golf cart and his playing partner, Moses Malone. Now, as you can see, he's teeing off on the 16th hole, which is an 80-mile par 4,000. So he makes the right club selection with a six iron, but then he makes a big mistake. He's got his feet lined up with the sixth ring of Saturn. Wrong. What you want to do is line up your feet with the fourth moon of Jupiter. He forgets to do that, and look what happens. He hits it fat and sends a bad slice off towards Mars. And that's practically out of bounds. So here's a Jerry Weber golf tip. When you're playing golf on the moon, keep track of the planets. Many times the difference between a par and a bogey is whether or not your feet are properly lined up with your anus. Joe, back to you. All right, Jerry, great report. You know, guys, you always hear about the moon being made out of cheese. Uh, you'd hate to go into a sand trap on that golf course, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when Sports Monster returns, ice dancing in the big city with someone special. Hi, I'm JoJo Starbuck. Stay tuned for more Sports Monster right after this. Welcome back to Sports Monster. I'm John Heyman. Hockey buffs have to admire the brutal honesty of Tampa Bay GM Phil Esposito. Speaking about his 92-93 NHL expansion club, Esposito stated, We're going to be crap. We're not going to be a good hockey team, but we're going to be entertaining. Espo backed up his words by announcing that the Tampa Bay franchise would be comprised entirely of the cast of the Las Vegas Review, Nudes on Ice. Joe? Thanks, Johnny. Good stuff. Now, Steve, I understand that you are going to be bringing us a story that you've been working on for quite some time. That's right, Joe. It was my privilege to do an in-depth profile of the very lovely and talented champion figure skater, Jojo Starbuck. 4 a.m. Jojo Starbuck awakens. Alice, her mother and trainer, Serve Jojo a hearty breakfast, mm, the most important eat. meal of the day. After downing 35 flapjacks, 14.7 kilograms of link sausage, and a quart of orange juice, Jojo is ready for her sit-ups. 399, 400, 401. Come on, you only have 500 more to go, 403. 200 kilometers on the Nordic track. Ski. Ski, Jojo. Ski like the wind and the all-important personal grooming. Rouge, rouge, more rouge. Bring out that eye. Come on, bring it out. No, the other eye. Then it's off to the rink. That's where I met Jojo Starbuck, three-time US champion, Olympic medalist, ice capade star, dancer, athlete, and artist. Grace and strength combined over ice. Jojo, Steve Thomas. Hi. How do you do? I was there as a journalist to conduct a simple interview. But something had come over me. I was obsessed. I did everything I could to extend the interview. I needed to find out. Was she feeling the same thing I was feeling? You know, I have a very high metabolism rate. Loving you is wrong. But if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Pardon me? sense something.
Soon afterward, I caught up to Jojo during her daily run. She wasn't going to like what I had to say. Jojo, I've been chosen to call the big figure skating championships. I'm a journalist, Jojo. We have to break this off. Break what off? I could tell she was taking it pretty hard, but I had a job to do. Jojo Starbuck needs to score nines or better with five judges in order to win the big figure skating championships. She's chosen to wolf on her freestyle program. Jojo begins with a flying camel, a double axle leap into a spread eagle. Here comes the butterfly. Yes! Now, the triple toe loop. She did it! A split jump into a triple sow cow. Perfect! She's skating on air. She's skating into the Zamboni. She's run over by the Zamboni. Oh, that's going to cost her valuable points. And I learned a very valuable lesson that night. A lesson about getting too emotionally involved with my subject. It will be a lesson I'll never forget. For Sports Monster, I'm Steve Thomas. Hmm, Steve, man, you okay? Yes, but I'm, I'm happy to report that JoJo just had the wind knocked out of her. But then Zamboni was totaled. Wow. Finally, the scene believing. The scene is Belmont Park in New York, where Scorecard Harry, Space Appeal, and Cafe Lex finished in a triple dead heat. Only the 19th time this has happened in North America. Scorecard Harry paid $6.520 and $3. Space Appeal paid $4.40, $8.20, and $5.60 while Cafe Lex rewarded his backers with payoffs of $10, $7.60, and $4.20. All right, Johnny, thanks very just, much. Just a minute. The 610 Exacta got you $42.60, and the 106 increased your bankroll by a whopping $62. That's all the time we have for Joe Bolster and John Heyman. I'm Steve Thomas. Have a great sports weekend. The 1065 Trifecta paid $112.60. The 5610 paid $162.40. The 1056 paid out 244.40. The 6105 paid 300 even. While the 6510 got you 340.60. The 510